Chemistry as a Science. Okay, so in this discussion, what we want to talk about basically is what is science? And um, how does chemistry fit into that? And basically, science deals with the natural universe and we learn about it through observation and experiment. And a process for science can be described as the scientific method. And a simple way to explain that is, you know, first we're going to state a hypothesis, next we're going to test the hypothesis, and then we're going to refine it. Now, what is a hypothesis? Basically, it's an educated guess. How do we think the natural universe works? Now, most good hypotheses are grounded in previously understood knowledge, and they have to be testable to be a good uh, hypothesis. So, um, so basically what you would do is you'd set up an experiment and test it, and it has to relate to the natural universe and see if your guess or your hypothesis is correct. And when we're doing these experiments, we usually pick small, well-defined parts of the natural universe and we want it because we want to see results of these experiments and we don't want to have too many um, interacting variables. Okay, so what is a theory? We use this term in common language all the time, but in science it has a very specific meaning. Um, it's a general statement that explains a large number of observations. And it has an overwhelming amount of evidence of its correctness. So, um, so that's really important. So it's not just a, oh, I think this is happening. That would be closer to a hypothesis. But a theory has a lot of evidence to support it. And we're going to learn about several theories in this course. Now, a law is a specific statement. And that's something that's never known to be violated in the entire natural universe. So to reach a to be a law, it's serious business. Basically, you know, we don't know of any violations. And so it's a highest understanding of the natural universe. And it's, again, thought to be inviolate, which means that it's thought to never be violated. So the law of gravity would be a good example of a scientific law. Okay, so let's do a quick example of just thinking about this. So which of the following fields would be considered science? So geology, ethics, political science, biology. So think about those for a few minutes and then go to the next slide and we'll get the answers. Now geology is definitely a science. The earth is a natural object and if we study it then that would be a science. Now ethics on the other hand is a branch of philosophy and it deals with right and wrong and it's really really super interesting but it's not science. Uh, in political science, it has the word science in the name, but it's still not a science in that sense. Um, there are many forms of government, but all are created by humans, so it's not the natural universe. Um, so political science would not be science by our definition. And then finally, biology, since we're studying living organisms, uh, and they're part of the natural universe, then the study of them is definitely going to be a science. Now, what about the language of science? Now, that would be mathematics. So, hopefully you're interested in learning more math this semester, because it is definitely the language of science. And so, all of the scientific fields do use it to express themselves, and some of them more than others. Chemistry is one of the more than others part. Uh, physics and, uh, and astronomy are scientific fields that, you know, they're concerned with fundamental interactions between matter and energy. Now, chemistry, on the other hand, is the study of interactions of matter with other matter and with energy. So, a little bit different than physics and astronomy, but definitely related. Biology, we know what that is generally, the study of living organisms, and geology is the study of the Earth. Now, these fields, uh, we, you know, we like to categorize them with separate boundaries, but actually that isn't really the case because, um, because we can have, you know, basically one of the more common ones is something called a biochemist. That's a biologist and a chemist. So you're trained in both areas and you study that borderline between the two. 
Okay, so what about qualitative versus quantitative? So we can have qualitative experiments and we can have quantitative ones. And qualitative is essentially a description of, the, of a quality of an object. So for instance, if we say that sulfur is yellow, we're looking at the color with our eyes. And that's a qualitative description. Um, your math book is heavy. That's another qualitative description. And, you know, the statue, it looks nice. Okay, well, that's another qualitative statement. Now, quantitative, on the other hand, involves a certain amount. So it's going to have a number attached to this. So, um, so in order to have a quantitative description, you have to know how much of something is present. And usually you count it or you measure it. So let's go ahead and test ourselves uh, as far as qualitative or quantitative descriptions. So a gold medal is yellow. A ream of paper has 500 sheets. The weather outside is snowy. And the temperature outside is 24 degrees Fahrenheit. So think about all of those and then we'll go to the next slide and we'll get the answers. Okay, now the first one, uh, we're describing a physical property of gold and that means it's qualitative. So if you have a color in there, it's going to be a qualitative description. Um, if the statement mentions a specific amount, it's quantitative. So let's go ahead and go back to that last slide and that would be that ream of paper. See, so that's a quantitative statement. Um, the word snowy, it's snowy outside. Well, that's qualitative. We're describing it, but we're not giving a specific amount. But when we give the weather a temperature, then we have a specific quantity and it's quantitative. Okay, so in summary, um, science is the process of, uh, of knowing about the natural universe through observation and experiment. And basically, we go through a rigorous process to determine new knowledge about the universe. And we call that method, or that process, the scientific method. Um, science is broken down into various fields, and chemistry is one. And chemistry is both qualitative and quantitative. So we'll see that as we go through the course, and especially in your labs.